Hey everyone, welcome back. So, if you've seen my previous video, you'll recognize this as the spiral groove aerodynamic bearing that I made recently. Um, I've made this for a class project actually, and part of that project was to make a Strybeck curve uh, of this particular bearing. That's just a graph showing basically how the friction drops off when it reaches the critical speed and it starts floating. I won't get too deep into that, but the essence of it was I needed to record how much force or how much torque it took to turn this at given speeds and built this test stand here. This is just a servo motor on a little aluminum frame and I needed to drive this bearing with this motor. This presents an interesting challenge and that's what I want to talk about today. Um, to couple the motor to this shaft is not really an easy task because this bearing has very low sort of tilt resistance, tilt stiffness, and it can crash very easily if, you know, sideways forces are applied up here, or if you try and translate it too much, it can bind up the central radial bearing. And so how do we make a very, very non-influencing coupling to drive this bearing with? The classic solution, which most will be familiar with, is the sort of two-piece two Lovejoy coupling with a polymer insert and those are really good for a lot of things but here that still wouldn't work uh, there's still too much coupling between you know air motion and forces exerted on the bearing so here's the solution this is a really neat kind of coupling where you have pin going through the shaft you've got say this is your motor shaft here and you have this floating dog with two drive pieces. Put that on and it bears against the uh, drive bar and you can turn it like this. It's kind of hard with this very small diameter, but you get the idea. Now what's cool about this is if you think about it and look at it, this, the motor, cannot exert any forces on this bearing apart from pure torque about the axis. So let's say we're here and we're misaligned in tilt, right? That's not really going to do anything as it spins. It's just going to rotate about. We're misaligned in X or Y. We have good tolerance there. That's not going to do anything. These are hardened, hardened rods, so they slide against each other really, really smoothly. If you try and you know say it's off center and you didn't have this able to wobble, it was fixed rigidly. If you tried to drive it, one dog would hit first and that would apply a moment, but it would also apply a moment about that axis and try and bend the bearing over. Here, when it can float, if one dog hits first, it just tilts with almost no resistance and it continues to tilt until that second dog contacts and then you have a coupled moment and can drive it. Uh, essentially perfectly non-influencing. Non it has, this coupling has zero stiffness in five degrees of freedom, but a very high stiffness, at least as high as the uh, Hertzian contact stresses are, are allowing it to be in the direction of interest. Now, this is a coupling with a very high amount of backlash. That's sort of the, the key drawback here. This only works if you're trying to drive something in one direction under a, some sort of constant load um, with this very high degree of, of uh, decoupling. So that is a drawback there, but really neat idea for doing non-influencing drives. Um, there's a bunch of them out there. You can make a whole video on them. But this is a neat one and it came in really handy here and allowed me to drive this uh, bearing super well and get some good data out of it. So hope someone found that interesting. Just thought I'd share. Thanks for watching.